Okay. I get it. You get it? You didn't do well last nah, semester. Maybe a D. Now you need F. some help. Please. You came to the right place. Help me. Fort Bend Tutoring. Math made easy. Wow. Mr. Witt. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is going to be about finding the trigonometry function values. Let's take a look at it, ladies and gentlemen. So with your trigonometry functions, you can actually learn these several ways. One way, ladies and gentlemen, is to understand that it's all about a ratio, a relationship between sides of a right triangle. For instance, you can learn that the hypotenuse is the value r and that you have your x value and your y value as though it's on a Cartesian plane, aka a rectangular coordinate system. One method is to know that sine theta is the ratio of y over r, whereas cosine theta is equal to x over r, and tan theta equals to y over x, being as though theta, this symbol right here, that Greek letter, it just stands for the measurement of an angle. So it can be replaced with the variable x or whatever variable they want to use. But anytime you see theta in a problem in trigonometry, they're referring to an angle measurement. And that's it. All right. Then we have the reciprocal of the first three trig functions I just talked about. And that is cosecant, secant, and cotangent. All right. And they are the exact flip of the other ones, as you see here. So sine theta is the reciprocal of cosecant. Cosine is the reciprocal of secant and tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent and vice versa. All right, we can represent these relationships in the form of right triangles. So as you see here along the horizontal segment I have my value of x, the vertical segment is my value of y, and then that side opposite the right angle, that 90 degree angle, I have my value of r, which is my hypotenuse. You can also have your triangle labeled in the following manner. Whereas your angle theta here is in the corner, Opposite of that is going to be that opposite side. So that's what that OPP stands for, the opposite side. Then over here, you'll have the adjacent side, that ADJ. And then, of course, opposite that right angle, we have the hypotenuse again. So some people learn it in that way, whereas the sides are labeled as opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. Sine theta would be opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And then, of course, you have the reciprocals again, the cosecant theta, the secant theta, and the cotangent theta. All right, so for those of you that have been keeping up thus far, let's go ahead and see how to apply that in a problem. Here in problem number one, it says find the six trig function values of the point negative 2, 2. So notice I have my rectangular coordinate system already mapped out here. And I'm going to plot the point negative 2, 2. So starting at the origin, I'll be moving two places to the left and then up to to have a point right here. So this point lies, notice, in the second quadrant where my x value is negative and my y value is positive. I'll then create a right triangle showing that my vertical distance is 2 and that my horizontal distance was negative 2. And so making that meet at the origin, I'll have a right triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and notate that right there. From there, I'll be labeling my triangle. So this is going to be negative 2 on the x-axis and then I'll have a positive 2 on the y-axis. In order to find out the length of my hypotenuse, that r side, I can use a version of the Pythagorean theorem that reads r equals to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So plugging in my values, I'll have the square root of negative 2 squared plus 2 squared. This gives me the square root of 4 plus 4, which gives me the square root of 8, which simplifies to 2 times the square root of 2. So that's my value of r. 2 square root of 2. And I'll go ahead and label it here on my triangle. So thus far, I have an x value of negative 2, a y value of positive 2, and I have an r value of 2 square root of 2. From this point, we can go ahead and find the values. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that if you haven't noticed already, I use right triangles to create my values. Some people do use the unit circle to come up with their values, and they memorize them. But I always had difficulty just putting that to memory. So I prefer the method of using the right triangles to come up with my six trig function values. But there's nothing wrong with unit. But there's nothing wrong with using the unit circle when you're able to use it, OK? The thing is, though, I've found that using the triangles, the right triangles, you can always generate the values using it that way. 
Coming up with my sine theta value, remember it's going to be y over r. I'll have my y value as 2 and my r value as 2 square root of 2. This simplifies to give me 1 over the square root of 2. We won't be leaving a radical in the denominator, so I'll need to rationalize that by multiplying by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Once I have that, you'll multiply straight across, and 1 times the square root of 2 is going to be the square root of 2 all over square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is 2. So that's my value for sine. So once again, starting out with the ratio of y over r, I plugged in those values from my triangle here, knowing that my y value is positive 2 and that my r value is 2 times the square root of 2. And then we simplified from there to get a result of square root of 2 over 2. All right. Next, I'm looking at cosine. Cosine's value is going to be x over r. So my x value is negative 2, and my r value is still 2 times the square root of 2. So to show you that again, on my triangle here, my x value is negative 2, and I'm using my r value, the hypotenuse, which is 2 times the square root of 2. Then I'll be simplifying this. The 2's will cancel out to give me a result of negative 1 over the square root of 2, and I'll then rationalize that by multiplying by the square root of 2 over square root of 2 to end up with a result that is negative square root of 2 over 2, and that's my answer for cosine theta. Next, I'll be looking at tan theta. Tan theta, ladies and gentlemen, is the ratio of y over x. So, plugging in my value of y, which is positive 2, over my value of x, which is negative 2, this simplifies to give me negative 1 as my value of tan theta. All right, so thus far, I have sine theta, which equals to the square root of 2 over 2. I have cosine theta equals to negative square root of 2 over 2. And I also have tan theta, which equals to negative 1. Remember that the cosecant value, the secant value, and the cotangent value are all reciprocals of those first three trig values. So what I'll do is simply flip my results. So here, for cosine theta, I know that initially we simplify this to 1 over the square root of 2. So the reciprocal of that would be the square root of 2 over 1. So writing this out as the square root of 2 over 1, this simplifies to give me a result of square root of 2. And that's it. Looking at secant theta, remember we were able to write cosine theta in the form of negative 1 over the square root of 2. So flipping that value, I'll end up with a negative square root of 2 over 1. This simplifies to give me a negative square root of 2. Then, looking at cotangent theta, remember tan theta is equivalent to negative 1. Well, the reciprocal of negative 1 is still negative 1. So my answer for cotangent theta is negative 1. And that's going to be all six trig values for the point negative 2, 2, which lies in the second quadrant. All right. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, I derived all of this after completing my right triangle here on my Cartesian plane. That's problem number one. Let's check out the next problem, ladies and gentlemen. Problem number two is coming up. So here in problem number two, it says to find cosine theta, given that secant theta equals to 5 thirds. So to solve for cosine theta, we're making sure that we understand that secant theta, which is equal to r over x, which also means the hypotenuse over the adjacent side is going to be 5 over 3. This tells me that my r value is 5 and that my x value is 3. Remember that cosine theta is the reciprocal of secant. Remember it's x over r or you could say the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So all I have to do is just flip this answer to find out what cosine theta equals to. So this is going to be 3 fifths and that's my result ladies and gentlemen. Done. All right. So that's problem number two. Let's move on, ladies and gentlemen. Got more to show you. So in problem number three, it asks to find all trig function values when theta equals to 30 degrees. All right, so I'll begin by drawing a ray that's about 30 degrees from the origin here. And then I'll show that this is 30 degrees. OK? And I'll even make this into a right triangle. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that since this is a right triangle, I already know two of the three angles in this triangle. I know that I have a 30 degree angle, a 90 degree angle, and what's left over is going to be 60 degrees. So now that we have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle here, and you, and especially if you're familiar with the ratio between those three angles, you would know that the value opposite the 30 degree angle has to be 1. The value opposite the 60 degree angle would be the square root of 3. 
and the value opposite the 90 degree angle would be positive 2. So make sure that your signs are correct based on the quadrant. I know that my x and y value have to be positive because this lies in the first quadrant. And I know that the hypotenuse will always be positive, so I have a positive 2 there. So using these three values as x, y, and r, or you can say the opposite, the adjacent, and then the hypotenuse, we can solve for all six trig values. So sine theta, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the y value over the r value. So I end up with 1 over 2. The cosine value is x over r, so that would be square root of 3 over 2. Then my tan value is y over x, so that would give me 1 over the square root of 3, and I'll need to rationalize that to get rid of that radical in the denominator, so I end up with the square root of 3 over 3 as a result. And these are the first three trig values for this 30 degree angle here. All right. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that in order to find cosecant, secant, and cotangent, you simply flip the first three trig values. So the reciprocal of sine theta is going to be 2. All I had to do was place 2 over the 1, in other words, flip it, and you'll end up with a value of 2 for cosecant. My secant value is going to be 2 over the square root of 3. So in multiplying by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 in order to rationalize that, I'll have 2 times the square root of 3 over 3 as my result for secant theta. In order to get cotangent theta, all I have to do is flip this result. However, I'm going to use this 1 over the square root of 3 because the reciprocal of that is just square root of 3. So I already have it simplified at square root of 3. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the answer to all six trig function values for problem number 3. All right, let's move on. In problem number four, ladies and gentlemen, this is the problem that we're dealing with. It says that theta is in quadrant two and sine theta equals to two thirds. They want us to find the values of the other five trig functions. So what I'll do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'll go ahead and set up a right triangle in the second quadrant. Now that I'm in the second quadrant, I'm already given two out of the three values of this right triangle. Remembering that sine theta has a ratio of y over r, I know that my y value has to be positive two. I also know that my r value has to be positive three. In order to find out what my x value is, I'll be using the Pythagorean theorem and therefore using the formula x equals to the square root of r squared minus y squared and plugging in my values. So here I'll have three squared minus 2 squared, which gives me the square root of 9 minus 4, which gives me a result of the square root of 5. However, my value in the second quadrant for x has to be negative. So I'll end up writing down a negative square root of 5 as a result. Now that my right triangle is completely solved for, I can solve for the other five trig functions. Remember, they gave us the value of sine theta. They told us it was 2 thirds. So that's two-thirds there. In order to come up with the cosine theta value, remember it's going to be your x over the r. So that gives me a negative square root of 5 over 3 as a result. For my tan value, that's going to be y over x. That's going to be 2 over negative square root of 5, which you'll have to rationalize by multiplying by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 to give you a result of negative 2 times the square root of 5 all over 5, which is the answer here. So thus far, I know that my sine value, which is given, is 2 thirds. My cosine value is negative square root of 5 over 3. I also have a tan value of negative 2 square root of 5 over 5. Remember that the cosecant, secant, and cotangent values are the reciprocals of these first three values that we've already found. So flipping the sine value, I'll end up with 3 halves. Flipping the cosine value, I'll end up with 3 over negative square root of 5, which I'll need to rationalize, and that'll give me a negative 3 square root of 5 over 5. Then, looking at my cotangent value, that'll be the reciprocal of this 2 over negative square root of 5. I'll write it as a negative square root of 5 over 2, and that'll be a result for cotangent theta. Let's go ahead and put a box around this stuff here so you can see what my answers are. All right. 
So once again, ladies and gentlemen, the cosecant theta value is 3 halves. Secant theta equals to negative 3 square root of 5 over 5. And then my cotangent theta value is negative square root of 5 over 2. And that's how you solve problem number 4. All right, I have one last problem for you, ladies and gentlemen. Problem number five. It says, find the six trig values of negative power of four. So notice, negative power of four is written in radians. To find out what this value is as degrees, then all you would need to do is multiply this negative power of four times 180 over pi. What happens then is that your pi's will cancel out to 1, and 4 goes into itself once, and 4 goes into 180 45 times. Then multiplying straight across, you would end up with negative 45 degrees. So negative pi over 4 is the same thing as negative 45 degrees. So what we'll do with that information is we'll go ahead and write the angle where it occurs. Graphing negative 45 degrees takes us to the middle of quadrant 4. So now that I have my angle here, I'm going to show that and go ahead and create a right triangle. Remember that this angle that we went down by is 45 degrees. So this is a 45 degree angle here, a 45 degree angle here, and a 90 degree angle there. We have a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. If you're familiar with the relationship between the sides of a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, then you'll know that opposite our 45 degrees, we have a value of 1. However, because I'm in the fourth quadrant, this y value has to be a negative 1. And finally, opposite the 90 degree angle is going to be the square root of 2 because our hypotenuse is always positive, ladies and gentlemen. Also, you can take the value of 1 and negative 1 and use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that our hypotenuse value is square root of 2. Now that I have those three values of that right triangle, we can go ahead and find the values of all six trig functions. Recall that sine theta is your y value over your r value. So you'll have negative 1 over the square root of 2. So that's going to be the first value for sine. We'll have negative 1 over the square root of 2. And then I'll need to rationalize that because we won't be leaving any radicals in the denominator to give me a result of negative square root of 2 over 2. So that's my value of sine. Then for cosine theta, I'll end up with my x value over my r value. And my x value, by the way, is 1 over my r value, which is square root of 2. So I now have 1 over the square root of 2. And then once again, I'll need to rationalize this. So I have a result that is square root of 2 over 2 for my cosine value. Then for my tan value, my tan value is always going to be y over x. I know that my y value is negative 1 and my x value is positive 1. So I'll end up with negative 1 over 1, which simplifies to give me negative 1 as a result. So thus far, we have a sine value of negative square root of 2 over 2. We have a cosine value of square root of 2 over 2. And we have a tan value of negative 1. Remember, the reciprocal of sine, cosine, and tangent are respectively cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta. So all you got to do is flip those results to find out your answers for those. So I'm going to start with this negative 1 over square root of 2 and flip that to get a negative square root of 2. Secant theta, looking at my cosine value of 1 over square root of 2, I know that the reciprocal of that will simply be the square root of 2. And then finally, the reciprocal of negative 1 is just negative 1. So those are the three reciprocals of our first three trig values, thus completing the problem and answering the last problem for today's tutorial, ladies and gentlemen. So this was finding the six trigonometry function values. This is Mr. Witt of Fort Bend Tutoring asking you to once again, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate to help us bring you more free math videos. Peace. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Visit our website at www.tutormemath.net.